Welcome to the second video in Course 2. The content for this video comes from Module 2, Proposals, Submissions, and Production. In this video, we will discuss different elements involved in production. These elements include copy editing, art preparation, and text production and design. First, we will discuss copy editing. The first step to take is to locate and secure a copy editor. You will need to determine the level of editing you want and how much you will pay. For example, are you asking for spell check and proofreading rather than a full edit? What will the editor's specific responsibilities be? For example, will they be responsible for resolving all queries and removing extraneous coding and embedded imagery, or will you do that in-house? Will the copy editor work directly with the author or through your staff? Will someone in-house double-check the copy editor's work? These are all important questions to ask when you are choosing a copy editor. There are a few key considerations you should address regarding art preparation. For example, you may need art in multiple file formats for different products. If the output will be web-based, do the images load quickly and easily? Are any files corrupt? Do they pixelate? Do they meet your institution's accessibility and compatibility standards? Are they properly keyed to the text for ease and reliability of use? Do any credits need to follow the images? Are there captions? If maps are included, are there map captions that are different from the map itself? Are art lines and labels and maps legible? These are all questions you should ask regarding art preparation. The next thing we will discuss is text production and design. Once text and art are final, the work must be produced for XML, HTML, typesetting in InDesign, or all of the above. XML markup happens at this stage to facilitate the design phase. Whether in-house or outsourced, a staff member will need to double-check the markup for accuracy. A code sheet provides standard presentation across your unit's products. The designer will assign a font, font size, and font format for each code. Once this has been completed, the typesetter can insert or flow the text into the template. Each chapter title, subhead, table, figure, and footnote should fall into its proper place. The designer and typesetter will work together to correct any coding errors. This is tedious and time-consuming work, especially if the author is still writing text or inserting figures. It is extremely costly to flow and reflow text or redesign a book because of late author additions. Once this process is complete, you have what are commonly called page proofs or simply proofs. One way to save costs is to create a template design for books or projects that you think you might repeat. Journals certainly fall into this category, and each issue should have a standard template design, look, and presentation. This helps both with the in-house workload and the branding, or recognition factor, of the journal. Finally, if you are creating a website or book, you will create or have the author create the index or site map for the work. In the final volume of a journal, you will need to create the volume index. A few more notes on text production and design. All sections of a proof, as well as the index, should be proofread and all corrections checked by the author, your staff, or both. Your designer should create a cover. If you plan to make a print version available, a front and back cover and spine are required. If you plan an online version only, a front cover or graphic representing the publication is sufficient. If you plan to offer a print on demand or any book product for sale, an ISBN is required. Journals require ISSNs. This video has discussed the elements of production, which include copy editing, art preparation, and text production and design. Thank you for watching.